Uh, before I get into what I'm saying, uh, listen, adults, as you go out, you need to get back. Uh, we got a big study. It's going to be a big teaching, so you really need to, to get back and, uh, and get with us as soon as you can. Uh, the, uh, the, the new members class. Now, we've been talking to you about several weeks, and finally we've got it scheduled. It's going to be right here at 7 o'clock Tuesday night. So if you're interested in being a new member here, uh, uh, then we want you to come. Uh, uh, something we began a while back, and, and so we'll, we'll be feeding you a meal, elders and elders' wives, and all of us will be there, and you can ask any question you want to ask, and then, and then, uh, then we'll, we'll have a good time together. So I just wanted to make sure that that was announced. Okay. Uh, looking for Jesus. Is Jesus lost? Uh, sometimes our terminology is not accurate, is it, uh, uh, we're, Jesus isn't lost. We're, you know, we're, we're the ones that need to be found. Lieutenant Dan asked Forrest, have you found Jesus? Where is he? Where is Jesus? Now, you get different answers. Uh, some people would say he's in your heart. Now, the, the, the individual that ascended into heaven is not in your heart. Now, his spirit is in your heart. But where is that individual that ascended? Uh, what's he doing? Was that an idea that Jesus came up with, you know, just to get a uh, hot air balloon ride into heaven? Or was that something that had been prophesied? Was that something Jesus came up with as a good idea? Or was that something that had been spoken of hundreds of years earlier? And if so, if it was prophesied about it, who did it? Uh, and what was the purpose of it? Uh, these are some things I really want to talk about today. Thursday is Ascension Day. And what that simply means is, is that it's been 40 days since the resurrection. And it'll be 10 days until Pentecost. So we're at 40 days from, from the resurrection, and it's called the Ascension. Uh, we get all excited about Christmas. Come on. Uh, we get all excited about Easter. But as I study and look at what people have to say and write about the Ascension, they don't know squat. Uh, it, it, it bothers me somewhat because we... Believers, the body of Christ, don't know what the ascension means. We don't know what the, what the importance of this day is. Now, I know different ones say Christmas is special to them, and, and others say Easter is special to them, but this day is special to me. And I have to believe that when we're done, it's going to be more special to you than it's ever been before. So we're going to look at some things. We're going to, we're going to talk about the ascension today, and so there's my title. The ascension, the day the kingdom began. Ascension, the day the kingdom began. Now, I need you to turn in your Bible to Daniel chapter 7. Why don't you just go ahead and get there. Uh, it's going to be a teaching day. That means we're going to be looking at a lot of scripture. Uh, you need to have a notepad and pencil because I feel pretty sure that I will be saying some things that you need to research. Uh, you need to take these things home, ponder them, and see if these things be so. Some of you have heard me over the years. You know kind of uh, a lot of what I'm going to say. I hope I've said something that's refreshing and maybe even fresh to you as well. But I want you to get this. This is, this is important. So what is the ascension about? Let's start off with a question. Was it just a great ride? Or really was it something that fulfilled a prophecy that spoke something about Jesus? Now while we're pondering that, and while I'm developing to answer it, let's get some, let's get some thoughts, let's get some, a visual of, of the day of ascension. I'll just show you some things in the scriptures. I want you to stay right there in Luke. Well, but write these scriptures down. No, excuse me, you stay right there in, in Daniel. And I want to read a scripture from Luke, and then one from Acts, and then we'll go to Daniel. But in Luke, chapter 24, verse 51, it says this. 
While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with what? Great Say great joy. Great, great joy. joy. Now, is that the correct emotion that you would have when the person that you love the most, that has taken care of you for three and a half years, that has taken you out to eat, taken you on vacation, taken you fishing, is this the kind of emotion that you think you would have when this person leaves? You know, every, uh, every week when Bonnie and, and the boys come up, uh, before they leave, she'll come by and she'll call me on the phone and she'll ask me if I want to go out and, and, and tell the boys bye. Well, of course I do. And this, I, I, don't, I don't have great joy. There's a sadness, and sometimes I even cry. Now, not all the time. Sometimes it's okay that they're going home. But most of the time... It's a sad time. But they said they had great joy. How many has ever heard that in the, uh, in the upper room during the t ten days as they were waiting for the day of Pentecost to come, how many has ever heard that there was a lot of sadness, that there was, oh, they were confessing their sins to one another and, and that it was just a real time of sadness? How, did you, have you ever heard something like that? Well, that's wrong. They went back to Jerusalem how? With great joy. Great joy. Because they understood the ascension. They understood what was happening that day. Let's look at another verse in Acts chapter 1 and verse 9. It says, And when he had spoken these things, the things of the kingdom, things about the coming of the Holy Ghost, when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up. And look at this, a cloud received him out of their sight. Now, did he get a ride on the cloud? What happened here? Now, this is, this is Luke's telling us what happened. He didn't ride on the cloud. What actually happened? The cloud received him out of their sight. The cloud opened, as it did with John in the book of Revelation, chapter 4. It said, come up hither. And heaven opened, the cloud opened, and received Jesus. Now, what's all that about? Daniel saw this. Daniel saw this and recorded it for us in the book of Daniel chapter 7, right where you're at. And he records for us some things about the ascension. And most of the time that we'll have today will be spent right here on, on these two verses, Daniel chapter 7, verse 13 and 14. We'll read that. And I want you to see what's going on here. This is so important to the believer. Daniel chapter 7, verse 13 says, In my vision... At night, I looked, and there before me was one like a son of man. Say son of man. Son of man coming with the clouds of heaven. Coming on, coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the Ancient of Days and was led into his presence. He was given authority, glory, and sovereign power, all peoples and nations. And men of every language worshipped him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away. And his kingdom is one that will end when Antichrist takes over for seven years. <laughs> what does it say? You tell me what the Bible says. Yeah. Now, what man says, what does the Bible say? Yeah. Will his dominion ever end? Yeah. No. His dominion is one that will never end. It will never pass away. Now, a lot can be said here, I'm telling you. But Daniel saw the Son of Man. And I could, I could just, this is my passion, people. I mean, we could just stay here and you could, you could just have to leave. I just talk so long. But, but, but Daniel, I was doing a couple of points I got to hit here and go. But Daniel saw the Son of Man. Now, that doesn't mean much to us. We were singing about it today. I was just crying because I understand the Son of Man. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Son of Man. Now, what does that mean? What's that? Daniel saw the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven. What does the Son of Man mean? Well, here's, write this down. The Son of Man was the way Jesus referred to himself. It was his most favorite way of referring to himself. In fact, it's very difficult to find him referring to himself any other way except 
the Son of Man. Eighty times in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, eighty times Jesus refers to himself as the Son of Man. Where did he get that term from? What's he trying to show us and tell us? What's he trying to teach us? Where do you suppose, now that you've read Daniel and Daniel saw the Son of Man, what do you suppose that Jesus is trying to tell us about himself? That's him. I am. Now I want to read a couple of these to you. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, to overwhelm you with them. You, can, you have no trouble looking it up and seeing that Jesus is the Son of Man. Now, but I'm going to read you three, just show you three, what, three now, and then I'm going to show you one at the end of the thing. And we're going, to, we're going to see this, okay? Look at Matthew chapter 16, verse 13. This is a very, very, very familiar passage. It says, it says, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, whom do men say I? Say it to me. I, I the Son of Man, am. Say that. I, I, the Son of Man, am. Now, you, you remember the story. Jesus is asking his guys, who do people say I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, well, some say you're John the Baptist raised from the dead, or Elias, or Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Is that what he said? And you remember, what, what, who do you say I am? And Peter got it right. Who did Peter finally say he, the Son of Man, was? You're the Christ. You're the Son of the living God. So the Son of Man is the Christ. And if Jesus is the Christ, then Jesus is the Son of Man. And what did Daniel see? One like the Son of Man. Coming with the clouds. Now, let me show you another one in Matthew 6, 9, 6. But they, but that we, ye have known that the Son of Man hath power on earth to what? To forgive sins. Then saith he to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go thine, to thine house. Now, while that's up there, who forgives sin on earth? Aren't you glad you can be forgiven of your sin on earth? But I want to tell you, it's the Son of Man doing it. We better understand the Son of Man, don't you suppose? Let's look at one more and then we'll move on. I'm not going to whelm you here. I'm just going to, you can, you can do this. Matthew chapter 11, verse 19. The Son of Man came eating and drinking. And they say, Behold, a man gluttonous and a winebibber, a friend of publicans and sinners, but wisdom is justified over children. Jesus the evangelist. Who is it that goes after you and I, the sinners? The, who is it that became flesh so that he could become friend of sinners? The Son of Man. So much can be said about the Son of Man. I think that, that gets the point across. Daniel saw the ascension. He saw it 600 years before it took place at Bethany. Daniel saw this happen. Daniel saw the Son of Man. Now, I want you to notice, you got your Bible right, laying in your lap right there. Uh, on Daniel chapter 7, verse 13, please notice that it's not on the cloud. It's with the clouds of heaven. What's that about? <laughs> Do we understand the clouds? Do we understand the cloud of heaven? Is this this white little puffy thing that, you know, hot air balloon experience? What, what are we talking about here? With the clouds of heaven. And then also notice that it's not, he didn't come to heaven, not with the clouds to heaven. It's with the clouds, what? Of heaven. Now those, those, I know those are little, little words, but they mean so much. And if you don't understand the cloud and you don't understand the Son of Man, you don't understand the ascension. Clouds of heaven. Now, cloud is a wonderful, wonderful story, and we sure can't, can't hang out a whole long time on clouds, but we're going to do a little work here because I really want you to understand the cloud. Um, something we don't understand, but that was not the case in the Bible day. In the days of the Bible, they understood that cloud. You know why? Because that's the glory cloud. That's the Shekinah glory cloud of God. That's the cloud that led the, the Israelites through the wilderness 40 years. Cloud by day. 
pillar of fire by night. That's the cloud we're talking about here. Let me show you. Exodus 13, 21. And the Lord went before them by day as a pillar of a cloud to lead them the way. And by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. Now what came out of that cloud in those 40 years? What happened in that cloud the 40 years? Was God in the cloud to start with? Uh, did, uh, did from there come instructions for manna? Did, did come that, from that cloud come instructions for water? Did co from that cloud come instructions for quail? I want you to understand that the cloud blesses us. It protects us by day or night. It's the glory cloud. We don't understand the cloud of God. But what's in the cloud? Lots of things. One thing is the throne. Amen. Psalms 97, verse 2. Just write these down. Psalms 90, that's why I love this screen. I can cover so much so fast. Yeah. Psalms 97, 2. It says, clouds and darkness are round about him. Righteousness and judgment are the habitation of his throne. Heaven is my throne. The earth is my footstool. Jesus was received into the cloud. Ezekiel saw this cloud. Now we do a lot of work at Ezekiel when we're doing the temperament study. Ezekiel saw this cloud. He saw the throne. But he saw beings in that cloud. And as we've seen over the years that this, 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 these creatures with the face of a lion, the face of a man, the face of an ox, the face of an eagle, these creatures don't just represent birds and lions and and, 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 and things, animals, what, what they're really talking about are people. And so Ezekiel saw this. And Ezekiel saw the cloud and he saw the throne. And notice that he sees things in the cloud or people or, or creatures in the cloud. Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 4 says this. And I be looked and behold a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud. A fire enfolding itself, and a brightness was about it. And out of the midst thereof, as the color of amber, out of the midst of the fire, and above the firmament that was over their heads. Over what? Whose heads? Who's he talking about? What's he talking about here? And the firmament that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne, as the appearance of a sapphire stone. That sounds kind of like where John saw, was it, in the book of Revelation? which we'll be at in a little while. But he saw the sapphire stone, and upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness as the appearance of a man above upon it. Uh, Ezekiel saw that cloud. Many things inside of that cloud. Did you know that the Ten Commandments came out of the cloud? <coughs> Ten Commandments that were having such a hoopla now up in... in, in in, in Ringgold and, and, and in, in Hamilton County. Come out of that cloud. Are the Ten Commandments the law of God? Are the Ten Commandments and the law of Moses the same thing? No, they're not. Just, I'm, that's not a, I'm not going to get into that. I just kind of threw that out there. Anyway. Did you know that the Ten Commandments came out of the cloud? In Exodus chapter 19 and verse 16, we're told about God telling his people, he says, I want you to go, I want you to sanctify yourselves, in three days I'm coming, and I'm going to give you the law. I'm going give to you, give you, tell you how I want you to, to run, the, run your lives and run the universe. It says this, and it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount, and the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud, so that all the people that was on the camp trembled. Remember the story? God comes and the people run. Don't talk to us. Talk to Moses. Came out of that cloud. The law of Moses came out of that cloud as well. Big things that God does come out of the cloud. Exodus 24, 16 through 18. The law of Moses. And the glory of the Lord abode upon Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And the seventh day, he called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud. Where did he call from Moses? Out of the cloud. Where did Jesus ascend and, and what was receiving him? The cloud. And the sight of the glory of the Lord was like devouring fire in the top of the mount, in the eyes of the children of Israel. Next verse. 
And Moses went into the midst of the cloud and got him up into the mountain. And Moses was in the mount 40 days and 40 nights. Now what happened those 40 days and those 40 nights? He received the, the oracles, the law of Moses, not the Ten Commandments. He, re he received the law of God. When he came down, remember they were making that golden calf and he broke them and had to go get some more. <laughs> Big things God does happen in that cloud. It's important to understand that cloud. It wasn't foreign to the Bible mind. It wasn't foreign to the Hebrew mind. It wasn't, it wasn't foreign. It's foreign to our minds because we're not taught about the cloud. We're not, we don't understand things like the Son of Man. We don't understand things like the cloud, but they're so vital to understand Scripture and what God's done for you and I. Now, with the thought of the Son of Man being the individual who would ascend, prophesied about, Son of Man having power on earth to forgive sin, Son of Man coming to redeem you and me as sinners, Son of Man coming as the Christ, with that thought, and with the thought of the cloud, the cloud being that, that place where God's throne is and, and where all heaven worships and heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool and, and that thought of big things coming out of that cloud. With, with that understanding, let me show you a verse now uh, that talks about both the Son of Man and the cloud in Matthew chapter 26, verse 64 through 66. Now, what's happened here is Jesus has been arrested. He's brought, been, been brought before the high priest. Jesus saith unto him, Thou hast said, Nevertheless, I say unto you, Hereafter shall you see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power. Sitting where? That's extremely important because the right hand is the power hand. The right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Now coming on, coming in. Clouds of heaven. Then, look what happened. After Jesus said this, Then the high priest rent his clothes, saying, he hath spoken blasphemy. What further need have we of witnesses? Behold, now you have heard his blasphemy. What think you? Said the high priest. And they answered and said, He is guilty of death. Please notice that what condemned Jesus to death was his saying that he was the Son of Man and he was coming in the cloud. Because in their mind, they understood that. They knew what he was saying. The Son of Man, the one that Daniel saw, was going to receive a kingdom, dominion, power, authority that would never end. The cloud, the judgment of God, the blessings of God. The cloud, the throne of God, the law of God, the cloud, the worshipers of God. Where are you seated right now? If you've been caught up, you've been caught up and made to sit together where? In heavenly places. I, I want to tell you, you're in the cloud. You've been translated from darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. And you're in the cloud. And, and you've been given all power and dominion. You've been made a kingdom of priests unto our God. Right. And it all happened on Ascension Day. The first day of the kingdom. Well, hallelujah. <laughs> well, Daniel saw it. Now, what was the purpose of this stuff? What's the purpose of the Son of Man? What's the purpose of the cloud? What's the purpose of, of what Daniel saw and we read in Daniel chapter 7, verse 13? Let's read 13 and 14 now together again. And in, the, in, the, in my vision at night, I looked, and there before me was one like a Son of Man coming with the clouds of heaven. Does that mean more to you now? He approached his, the Ancient of Days. Who is the Ancient of Days? Oh, Father God. Oh, and was led into his presence. Led like a lamb to the slaughter. Led. <coughs> led into, he was given authority and glory and sovereign power. All peoples and nations, men of every language worshipped him. His dominion is everlasting dominion that will not pass away. And his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. When will it be destroyed? Come on. Never, never, never. Forget your Antichrist. One greater than Antichrist is here. Amen. Greater is he that's in you than... Doesn't matter what that really means. Greater is he that's in you. 
So I need to ask a question. What day was it that Jesus received sovereign power? What day was it that Jesus received sovereign power? The day of the ascension. Is he going to receive more power one day? Is there all or, he's been given all power and all authority. Is he going to get all her power one day? He received it that day. Sovereign power. What day was it that he received an everlasting dominion and a kingdom that would never be destroyed? What day was it? The ascension. The first day of his kingdom. Now, uh, so what's Ascension Day? Ascension Day is the first day of the kingdom. Ascension Day is the day that Jesus received his kingdom. The Ascension Day is the day he sat down on the throne. Ascension Day is the day he began to reign and rule. That sounds good. And we all would say, where's, where's Jesus? Well, if he's not in my heart, then he must be in the throne. And that sounds all good and sweet until we really are told what you're saying. See, what that really means is, is that as most believers are still waiting for a kingdom to come, you're saying that there is a kingdom now. In fact, it's been here for 2,000 years. And we're still waiting on something that ain't going to happen, folks. I'm talking to you about ascension. I'm talking to you about the Bible. I'm not giving you man's doctrine all I've given you is scripture, after scripture, after scripture, after scripture. And I ain't done yet. <laughs> you see, we get so baffled and bewildered and tribulated. You know, we, we want to tribulate. <laughs> Just enjoy the kingdom. Have your abundant life. Okay. That's what Ascension Day is. Now, again, we get excited about Christmas. We get excited about Easter. But I'm telling you today, there is an Ascension Day. There is a day that the kingdom began. The kingdom that we call the kingdom of God or the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Or the kingdom of the Son of God. Now, let me show you some stuff. This is what Peter taught. This is what the apostles taught. Let me show you. In, in, first, in, 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 in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 11. 2 Peter 1, 11. 2 Peter 1.11, let me read this to you. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. What kingdom? The kingdom of our everlasting, the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now, what, what, what Peter's talking about here, he says, he's talking about you, you functioning in your gifts, you're functioning in, in your laboring, you're functioning in, in what you're able to do, what God's gifted you to do, what he's called you to do, your purpose. When you're functioning in that, then you have an entrance into the kingdom, the everlasting kingdom of Jesus Christ. Why were the apostles so happy? Why were the disciples so happy when Jesus departed? Because they understood what was happening. They understood the Son of Man. They understood the cloud. They understood what was happening right then. They understood the kingdom was beginning. That's why they were, had great joy. And I tell people this today. That's not their reaction to me. Something that should bring us great joy brings us great warfare. Because we don't understand the kingdom. We're waiting for it to come in observation. We're waiting for it to come with meat and drink. We're waiting for it to come so we can just have our many, many blessings. We're waiting for it to come manifested in the natural. But Jesus said, Luke 17, the kingdom of God doesn't come with observation. Paul said in Romans 14, it doesn't, it's not meat and drink. It's righteousness and it's peace and it's joy. It's great joy. In the Holy Ghost of God. That's what the kingdom's about. Jesus said the kingdom of God is within you. You'll never have it out of you until you first realize that it's in you. And it began that day. Hallelujah. Paul taught this. 
Paul says that when you receive Jesus, you will be moved, translated. He couldn't come up with a good enough word, so he just said, you're just going to be moved from here to there. Let me show you. Colossians 1.13. Who hath delivered us? Who is going to or has? Which, yeah. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness and hath, has already translated us into what? The kingdom of what? His of his dear son. Folks, don't miss the kingdom. Don't wait for some tribulation. It ain't going to happen. It's already done. Just enjoy your kingdom. You've already been translated. You've already been called of God. You've already got the entrance. Enjoy it. Now, one more passage here, and then we'll get, we'll get on to, 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 to trying to land. Um, do you realize, you know, a lot has been said about born again. You must be born again. How many has ever heard you must be born again? Yeah. You must have said it. You must be born again. Is that, do you, is, is Jesus emphatic there? Verily, verily, I say unto you, you must be born again. Now, it's, it's, it's necess, necessity. But why are you born again? So you can die and go to heaven? No. <laughs> that's in there. But that's not the reason. And you got to see this, Okay. John chapter 3, Jesus has a visitation by Nicodemus, a teacher of the law of God. He should know these things. Teachers of the law should know these things. That's why I have a problem with television. Yeah. They don't know this stuff. And I start yelling at the television. Yeah. I know nobody here does that. <laughs> Nicodemus, Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. It doesn't say he cannot go to heaven when he dies. It says you can't enter the kingdom of God. The purpose of your water baptism, the purpose of your spirit baptism is so that you can enter the kingdom of God. You can have righteousness and peace and joy in your life. Amen. You can have an abundant life. You can establish a world about you. You can create a world that's abundant. That which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of spirit is spirit. Marvel not. Don't, don't let this blow you away. Marvel not that I said to you, you must be born again so that you can go into the kingdom. But when I say that to people, they marvel. They say, you speak as a crazy man. You know, your much learning has made you mad. Yeah, I've lost my mind. Aren't you glad? Aren't you mind? Because there's a better mind. He's given me the mind of Christ, and he's given it to you too. Now I got to close this, okay? Wait, I said I could just go on. I mean, I, I could just do the Son of Man, eighty verses. That you know, buddy, I tell you what, in the cloud, even more than that. But I'm just, I'm just showing you these things, because the King, Ascension Day was the day the kingdom began, two thousand years ago. Now that's something to be happy about, you know. I mean, it's, isn't it as good as Easter, or isn't it as good as as, as Christmas? But we don't recognize it. Do you see why it bothers me sometimes? Because it was the day that you were made a, a, a kingdom of priests, right. our kings and priests unto your God. It was, it was the day redemption activated for all tongues and all tribes, not just the Jews anymore, but every person. It was that day. That was the day that all this took place because worthy is the Lamb. Right. Right. I'm glad it's the day when we don't have a lot of visitors. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. Now, I want, I want to show you some things. Revelation, I need, you, I need you to turn now. We're done, done, in, done in Daniel. Revelation chapter 1, verse 9. Uh, before I show you a video uh, of the ascension in the Bible, a word video, I want to show you what John, 
the writer, the author of the book of Revelation said about the kingdom and about the tribulation, but tribulation is not my point today. I've just got to, I know some of you are wondering because you hear this and you hear that and, and, and you know, and I'm, I've got you a little marveled, but marvel not. Uh, right. Just enjoy the kingdom. Right. Uh, uh, we're we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna see something here in just a second. So in Revelation uh, chapter 1 and verse 9. John, writing here, says, And I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation, in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of what? Now, when did John write this? A long time ago. Just say a long time ago. John wrote this a long time ago, probably around 65 A.D. Also, brother and companion, tribulation, and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ was in the isle of Pat, called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Now, uh, John was in the kingdom, and he was also in the tribulation. Now, that's not my point, and that's, I'm not going to go there. But don't worry about the tribulation because it's already happened. Yep. Jesus has already taken care of that. Yep. Just enjoy the kingdom. Now, the book of Revelation is a book about a present kingdom and not just a kingdom that's going to come. The kingdom of God is and was and is to come. There's more to be enjoyed. I'll give you that. But it is and it was. There was an old covenant kingdom. There is a new covenant kingdom. And there's a covenant coming kingdom. There's a, not a, I won't call it a kingdom, but there's a coming presence of God that we're going to experience that's even better than this. Okay. Now, now, book of Revelation. Book of Revelation, jot this down, is divided into four great visions, four sections. If you understand these four sections, you'll understand the book of Revelation. Book of Revelation divided into four great visions. Great visions. Each vision gives us a picture, a different picture, a, a, a revelation of Jesus Christ. Uh, each, each one of those sections shows us uh, the revelation of Jesus Christ. When you put all this together, then you come up with who He is and what His passions are about and, and, and what He's about, His revelation to us. The revelation of Jesus Christ, not the revelation of Antichrist. Antichrist is not even written in that book. It's the revelation of Jesus Christ and it's divided into four sections and it's four great visions. And we'll show you, okay? Each vision, each section is divided and set off by John going in the Spirit. Each one of them. John's going to say, and I was in the Spirit. This is a spiritual vision. It was like Daniel had. It was like Moses had. Going into the cloud and experiencing the presence of God. It's going in there and seeing things that, that I have not seen, but are prepared for those that love Him. And are revealed to us by the Spirit. Spirit. You can have this. God's no respecter of persons. You get serious enough with God, you can get that heavenly place. Okay, now, let me show you these, these four. Write these down real quick because this is not the lesson. Just showing you this real quickly so you see, kind of think I'm, at least you think I know what I'm talking about, whether, whether I do or not. It's still up for debate, but anyway. First, the first great vision. <laughs> it's in Revelation chapter 1, verse 10. You got your Bible right there at Revelation chapter 1, verse 9. You can look to see. It's on the screen as well. But in Revelation chapter 1 and verse 10, John writes, I was where? In the Spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. And that gives us a picture of Jesus. As you read through that, you'll see a, a, a total revelation of Him as the Son of Man who's standing in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. And He begins to speak to each, each candlestick, to each church. And give, see, His passion is His church. And, and He wants His church done right. And when we don't do it right, He'll tell us. And if we don't do it right long enough, He'll remove our candlestick. That's the first great vision. second great vision is in Revelation chapter 4. It's a lamb slain. Slain from the foundation. And in verse, verse 2, John says, And immediately I was where? In the Spirit. And behold, a throne was set in heaven. And one sat on the throne. And he sees this revelation, which we're going to come back to in just a second, because that's where I want to end at. The third great vision, the third revelation, or the third part of the revelation of Jesus Christ was King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Is, and we find that particular writing and that revelation in chapter 19 of the book of Revelation. 
uh, where, where Jesus comes out of heaven riding on the white, white horse and, and with a name on his thigh, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and we're given a, a, a visual image of Jesus riding through the nations, not, not just riding through the church and not just riding through Israel, but riding through the nations and every tongue and every kindred and everyone was going to bow before him. That's his passion. And in verse 17, of chapter 17 and verse 3, it says, So he carried me away where? In the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman. And he talks about Babylon and, and how that's going to be done away with and was done away with and, and, and all that. So anyway, then the fourth great vision is in Revelation uh, chapter 20, begins in chapter 21. The angel comes and says, Hey, John, I want to show you the Lamb's wife. And he takes him away and he shows him the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven. Listen. You're, you're not born for heaven. You're, come, you're born to come down out of heaven right. and, and minister and create a new earth and a new heaven. And, um, Revelation 21.10 says, And he carried me away, this angel did, who, who was a carrier of the seven vials and all the stuff, and he's in the spirit, and to a great and high mountain. And showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven. And there we have that revelation of his wife, his bride, his church, the foundations of the apostles and the prophets. And, Oh, come on. Yep. Pearls. Oh, yeah, he's a pearl. And when you find this gate, come, oh, you can't. They're not here. Are you hearing me? And, and, and he's, got, he's got all kinds of entrances around. You can get into this thing any way you want to. I mean, you don't have to come as a, as a Baptist or as a Methodist. You can come as a, as a life gate person. Or as, you, can, you can get in this thing. Yep. That's a revelation. That's his passion. I'll find a door for you to come in. <laughs> All right, that's the revelation. That's, that's just a quick little rabbit trail. It's a good one, though, wasn't it? All right, now, in one of those, though, we're given, we're given the picture of the ascension. We're given a video, a word video, by the Spirit of the ascension. It's in chapter 5, so, so get there, get there. Revelation chapter 5, and you'll see the ascension in word picture by the Spirit. You'll see what John saw. Because Daniel saw it, and Daniel told us a little bit about it, but John sees it, and John tells us a lot about it. And this is so good. I want to read verse 1 of Revelation chapter 5 through verse 7. And then I'll talk. And I saw in the right hand, oh, that's so powerful, the right hand of him that sat on the throne, a book. A what? A book. A book Greek, biblion. Uh, a scroll, a book, written within. It was written on the inside and without, on the back side. It was written all over. <laughs> sealed with seven seals, perfectly sealed. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the earth. Any place else to look? <laughs> no man was found worthy. No one was able to open the book, neither to look therein. And I wept much. This upset John. He knew what that book was. He knew that somebody had to open it. Because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. Now, Take the screen down just a second. Um, I just want to say this here in case I don't say it later. We sing, Worthy is the Lamb. Now, you got your book in your, in your lap. I'm going to show you in just a second. But why was he worthy? Why is he called worthy? Oh, I'm just going to plant that picture, plant that thought, because I want you to know why he's worthy. I want to know if he's worthy today. Because if he's worthy today, then the book's been opened. Don't wait on those seven seals. Don't wait on this to happen. Because I'm going to show you in just a second, he's, he's worthy to open the book. And if he's worthy, then it's done. He doesn't have to become worthy. He is worthy. He was worthy. On Ascension Day, he was worthy. Okay, here we go. And, and, and I wept much, verse 4, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. 
And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold the lion, the what? The lion of the tribe of Judah, uh, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne where? Now all of a sudden, the ascension, he's brought before the presence of God. And there is the Son of Man, the Lamb of God, in the midst of the throne. In the midst of the throne and on and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain. Jesus had just been crucified. He looked like a slain lamb led to the slaughter. The lamb that looked like he'd been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. And what did Jesus say that he was going to do with the spirit? He was going to send it, and he came ten days later. It's going to be sent, and it came on the day of Pentecost. Ah, that's the next time. Anyway, and he came, the lamb, he came and took the what? Yeah. Took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. He received his kingdom. He received what Daniel had sealed. What God told Daniel to seal. 600 years later, Jesus received it and opened it. Amen. He's worthy. You understand the picture? The ascension happens. The lamb comes before the throne in the presence of the Ancient of Days. He takes it out of his right hand, his power hand, the authority hand. He's worthy to open it because he's perfect. Nobody else has ever been perfect before him. Nobody will ever be perfect after him. You can be blameless, but you can't be perfect. And he opened the book. And the seven seals. And the vials. And the trumpets. Hmm. He took it. Then verse 8. And when he had taken the book... The four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb. Well, what are that? Well, I can't get into all of this. But you have your twelve tribes of Israel. You have your twelve apostles. who's going to sit on the thrones. Come on. You got an old covenant and new covenant. You got it all coming together here, buddy. The twelve and the twelve is twenty-four. Am I adding correctly here? You haven't got an old covenant and new covenant. You got a covenant. Uh, fell down and the lamb uh, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors and uh, odors and which are the prayers of the saints and, and they sang a new song they sang a what? a new song what was the old song? song of Moses in chapter 15 they're going to sing the song of the lamb and the song of Moses but that's because the song of Moses is done it's the song of the lamb now it's the new covenant song it's the it's the new things. It's what God is doing now in your life and in my life today. Right now, it's new. Uh, His blessings are new every morning. Hallelujah. Okay. Uh, they are to take the book and to open the... Uh, well, start over. Verse 9. And they, and they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy. Why? To take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God. Hallelujah. By thy blood. Out of every kindred, out of every tongue, out of every people, out of every nation. When did it begin? Ascension. Began at ascension. When did the kingdom begin? Ascension. When did your redemption begin? Ascension. When did all of our... It began on the day of ascension. The ascension is the first day of the kingdom. And he received it. Where am I? <laughs> verse, verse 10. And has made us. Here's, here's the key point today. You're not going to be made kings and priests. You are a kingdom of priests. And has made us unto our God kings and priests. And you shall reign Hallelujah. on the earth. Listen. Yeah. Don't, don't worry about reigning in heaven. Just, just <laughs> reign. Come on. On the earth. You reign and rule in your world. You create a world that you can rule. You create a world that you reign in. You bless people. You allow him to come forth out of you and rule and reign. 
You're a kingdom of priests. That simply means you, you are a, a, a mediator between God and man. You have been given the ministry of reconciliation. Come on, Acts chapter, uh, 2 Corinthians tells us that we have been made to reconcile God to man and man to God. And, and that's what we're here to do, to rule and to reign. Amen. Kingdom of priests, minister to people. You minister to people, God will bless your life. Look at here. And I beheld, verse 11, the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beast and the elders and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000. What's he saying? Just everything. Just everything. Is, think of something. It was praising God when this happened. Everything's going to be redeemed. God, oh, come on. The sons of God are crying out for redemption of the whole earth. Saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and, and honor and, and glory and blessings and, and every creature which is in heaven and, and on the earth and under the earth. How many is left? And, 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 and such as are in the sea and, and all that are in them. Heard I saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power uh, to, uh, be unto him who sitteth uh, upon the throne and, upon, and unto the Lamb uh, forever and ever. For how long? For, forever and ever. When did, it, when did this happen? On Ascension Day. How long ago was that? When did he receive his kingdom? What was the first day of the kingdom? Oh, don't miss your kingdom. Don't miss your king. <laughs> and the four beasts said amen. How many can say amen? Every lion and ox and man and eagle temperament in here say amen. 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 <laughs> and the four and twenty elders, all, all the elders say. All the elders say. Amen. amen. <laughs> we'll fall down and worship him. <laughs> that liveth for how long? Amen. Forever and ever. So what's the ascension? Is it good like Christmas? Is it good? Is it good like Easter? Aren't you glad for Christmas? Aren't you glad that, the, that, that he was made flesh yes. and, and came and was tempted and tested and tried just like you and me all the time? Aren't, but aren't you glad he showed you how to overcome it? Right. Yeah, and that you can. Aren't you glad for the blood of Jesus Christ yes. at Easter when, when it washes us from our sins, moves me into new things and, and washes me from my old stuff, my old Delbert, and moves me to a new creation? But aren't you glad that there was an ascension day, a day the kingdom began? When you were made kings and priests, when you were redeemed, that was your day. That was your day of ascension. When you were caught up and made to sit together with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And now you rule and you reign. Let nobody tell you, you don't have authority. Amen. You can speak to mountains. Amen. You can command them to be cast into the sea. It might take a while. You might have to move them one rock, one pebble at a time. But it's going to happen. Because you're a king and a priest unto our God. The ascension, the day the kingdom began. Let's pray. Father, thank you. We love you, Jesus. Worthy is the Lamb to open the books. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy are you, Lord, to receive all of our glory and all of our praise and all of our worship. Worthy is the Lamb. Oh, Lord, we love you. Lord, I pray today that something's been said to show us that we're born again to come into your kingdom. That we've been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of your dear Son. That we have entrance into it right now. That we have a glory cloud to ride in. That because of the Son of Man, our sins are forgiven on the earth. Thank you, Jesus. Now, Lord, I pray for the people. I pray for each one. I ask you, Lord, to renew them by your Spirit. Build them up in their most holy faith. Encourage them and bless them. Lord, I pray now that we've... We've, pray, we've preached your word. We've preached it, Lord, best I can. Lord, I pray now that you'll follow that with signs following. That, Lord, as we pray for sicknesses, they'll be healed. 
as we lay hands on people, what we pray for will happen. As we speak to mountains, mountains will be moved. Lord, I ask you now to do that in Jesus' name. You're sick in your body today. God wants to heal you. Come on up here. <laughs> I like that. Come on. He's going to confirm his word. That's what he says. I'll confirm it with signs following. You need Jesus in your life. You don't know him. He's not your king. He's not your Lord. I want you to have an entrance into the kingdom. I want you to come down. We want to pray for you. Maybe you're having, going through things at home. Not good. He wants it to be good. He wants a world that you can rule and reign. What's going on in your life? Job? Finances? I don't care what it is. He's going to touch you. He's going to do something today because we've preached the word. And signs will follow. So I want you to come. I don't care what you're going through. You're sick in your body, be coming. You need financial help, be coming. You need somebody just to pray with you about somebody else that's sick, be coming. Whatever you need, I want you to come and come right now.